there, Brainiacs. Welcome back to Neurotransmissions. I'm Ali Astrocyte, and as you probably know, I'm a neuroscientist, not a philosopher. But this week, we're getting a little bit metaphysical. Here to help is our friend Jade. Hi. Jade is the creator of Up and Atom, a YouTube channel about math, physics, and computer science. Her videos are amazing, and her doodles are the cutest. You can check out her work by clicking the link up here. Jade, as someone with a background in physics, I have a question for you. Is there any such thing as objectivity? Well, it really depends what you mean. I mean, some things are undeniably objective, like the Earth has one moon, or there's only one sun in our solar system. But there are other things that are clearly not objective, like beauty and good music. Good point. First, let's try to define objectivity. When I think of something being objective, I think unbiased, neutral, partial. Yeah, basically, like when you look at this leaf, objectivity would be if you see the same green, the same shape as I do. It shouldn't matter who's looking at it, its properties should be the same. From a neuroscience perspective, this question is kind of a tough one. And I would argue that while there are things that we think are objectively true, no human being is capable of being truly objective, and therefore objectivity can't really exist for us. What do you mean? Well, our brains are just that. They're ours. That means that everything we see, hear, feel, and experience gets processed through all the things that make us us. And that makes it impossible to be truly objective. So you mean when I show you this leaf, we're not seeing the same thing? Let me back up to explain a bit more. See, the world is a big, complicated, noisy place. Lots of stuff is happening around us all the time, and our brains just aren't big enough or fast enough to process it all at once. So our brains kind of have to be selective. We have to pay attention to understand what's going on. But we can't give our full attention to everything. We have to focus on just some of the information so our brains can absorb it. That's why things like the cocktail party effect exist. This is the phenomenon where your brain is able to focus on just one thing at a time. Like when you're at a crowded party and the music is bumping and there are people talking all around you, but you only hear the conversation you're having with your friend. I've had that happen to me before. Even though I know about all the stuff going on around me, I'm not really listening to it. I'm listening to my friend's voice and the rest of it kind of just gets tuned out. Exactly. Your brain takes the information it gets from the environment, filters it, and helps you understand what's going on by comparing the current situation with everything else you've ever experienced. But you can't remember everything you've ever been exposed to. Our memories are kind of, well, bad at remembering. Our brain selects what it thinks is important and gets rid of the rest. And since our brains are focused on specific kinds of input and not just absorbing everything all around us all the time, you could almost argue that each of us lives in our own personal virtual reality built by our brain. In fact, even though our neurons fire really quickly, they're not instantaneous. So everything you see and hear has already happened. Each one of us is living about 80 milliseconds in the past. So everything I'm seeing and hearing now happened like 80 milliseconds ago? Mm-hmm. That's super freaky. But what does any of this have to do with objectivity? Well, what this means is that we don't experience anything objectively. We're always influenced by our internal filters, whether we're conscious of it or not. That's why eyewitness testimony in court cases can be very unreliable. Because even if a person is really, truly convinced that they saw what they say they saw, it doesn't mean that what they say they saw is what actually happened. Now we can argue that there are things that are objectively true, like the sun is a star, but individual human beings aren't capable of being truly objective. We can't remove ourselves from our understanding of the world around us, so we're always the subject of our own biases. Science tries really hard to be as objective as possible. We've built the entire scientific method around trying to remove as much personal influence as possible, but it still isn't perfect. I mean, even just choosing which questions to ask and which experiments to try is a process affected by our human understanding. What questions haven't we thought about asking yet, just because we can't get outside of our own brains? <sighs> so those are my thoughts on it. But Jade, I'm curious, what's your perspective on this? 
does objectivity exist? Well, actually, Ali, uh, there are some things we would think are completely objective, like time. And I don't mean the way we perceive time, like how an hour at Disneyland goes so much faster than an hour of study. I mean, like, if you measure a minute, it should take the exact same amount of time as if I measure a minute, don't you think? Yeah, sure, if we've both got our stopwatches on. But according to Einstein's special theory of relativity, that's not always true. Time can change relative to who's observing it. And events in time can change too. For example, if me and Ali were standing some distance apart and we both shot flare guns into the air, if another person, Micah, was flying overhead in a plane, he'd see one flare fire before the other. I know what you're thinking. Micah just needs to get his glasses checked, right? But no, the events actually happen at different times for me and Ali as they do for Micah. The key here is that he was moving relative to us. Someone flying overhead in the other direction would see the flares fire in reverse order. So it's hard to say that objectivity really exists when even something like time depends on perspective. So maybe objectivity isn't a thing, or maybe it only exists separate from individual people. Well, Brainiacs, what do you think? Does objectivity exist? Vote in our poll and let us know what you think. Jade, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Ali. Go check out Jade's channel to learn something new about machine learning, AI, and other cool maths, as they say, down under. This is part of a double collaboration, so catch our other video we made together over at her channel on the classic question. When a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. Until our next transmission, I'm Ali Astrocyte. Over and out.